everybody. Um, my name is Omar Frankel. I am a software engineer at Red Hat and I work on the Overt project. Uh, I would like to talk to you today about uh, a little about Delta Cloud and integration of uh, Delta Cloud uh, with uh, the Overt project. So I will talk, I will give a small overview of uh, Delta Cloud and motivation for it, what cloud APIs it supports, and how to use it uh, on top of Overt. And I will show mainly examples of using uh, Overt with Delta Cloud with EC2 and SIMI APIs. Okay, so Delta Cloud is Ruby-based open source Apache project uh, it abstracts the differences between uh, different cloud providers, between the different APIs currently supported. Um, the Delta Cloud API, EC2 API, and the SIMI API. And on the other end, it supports uh, many cloud providers, EC2, Ovild, OpenStack, OpenEbula. And this is really a uh, Nice, nice thing to have, to have uh, one centralized API uh, over uh, many different providers. So how does it work? So as I said, on one hand we have uh, these three APIs, is the SIMI, EC2, and the Delta Cloud APIs, and uh, the server using drivers per each provider allows us to uh, extend uh, to many providers. So there is a driver uh, for EC2 and for Overt and so on, and each driver actually supports a provider. So this way we can have uh, many providers uh, under this Delta Cloud server, and we can use uh, the specific APIs that we already know, uh, the standard APIs. Uh, okay, so the motivation uh, is uh, really uh, clear. If you have heterogeneous cloud environment, if you have more than one provider that you are using, so you don't have to learn new API per provider, you can just uh, use uh, the standards. You can use EC2 if it's uh, uh, very common today, and the SIMI that um, wants to be the standard for a virtualization a API. And another use case that if you already using many projects that already have some support for EC2 API, uh, for example, a hit that uh, we just talked about, uh, I know it has some EC2 API support and all kind of other projects. So uh, if you want to add new provider uh, to your system so you don't have to uh, recreate all your scripts and you don't have to learn uh, its new API, just add it under the Delta Cloud and you can use the same API uh, with your new software. So bottom line is if you work with any one of these APIs already, so you can use many providers, and on the other end, uh, if you have many providers, so you can use uh, one specific API uh, over it, over all of them. So the current supported uh, cloud APIs in Delta Cloud is the SIMI API. SIMI stands for Cloud Infrastructure Management Interface. Uh, it's uh, rather new, but uh, it uh, aims to be the standout. It's the DMTF uh, spec. And the other one is EC2 API. EC2 is the, Elast the Amazon Elastic Cloud, uh, which is uh, very common because it's uh, uh, used uh, a lot, and even new projects uh, they are uh, implemented today are having some support for this API because it's so common and used. And uh, the third one, the Delta Cloud support, is the Delta Cloud uh, API itself. The, they have their own uh, API. 
Okay, so Simi uh, is a REST-based API. Um, all the entities in Simi are a, require a template that uh, is based for the entity. So if we want to have a machine, so it's based on a template, configuration and an image. Uh, volume, is the, volume is images for the machines. Uh, there are network entities and network ports. So this is uh, currently Simi. Uh, EC2 API, uh, I think they have also REST, but um, I'm not sure about it. What's definitely sure is they have HTTP GET and POST, and all request is, is combined of the uh, endpoint action and parameters for these actions. So uh, anytime you are sending a request for EC2, you specific uh, the URL and the action that you want to perform and the parameters for this action. And it's all on the HTTP uh, GET request. Uh, EC2 main entities are AMI, which are the templates that contains the software configuration. Instance type is the hardware configuration. Instance te instances are actually uh, the virtual machines. Uh, also volumes and network entities. A uh, region in EC2 is uh, geographical unit, okay, to have a, a common data center that sits in the same geographical location, so they are bound into regions. And availability zones are uh, isolation units for a case of failures. Uh, so you can put data center in av availability zones and so they can communicate together in case of a failure. Delta Cloud API, also REST best API. Uh, its main entities are instances, images, uh, hardware profiles. Uh, realms are, uh, again, unit some um, how to say, uh, units to ha have together data centers, so it's some kind of clusters. Uh, it don't have to be regional, uh, but it may be also an example of usage for them. Um, storage uh, entities and network entities as well. So uh, I will focus about using the Delta Cloud on top of Overt. And I will show examples using uh, EC2 and Simi. First, I want to uh, give a short uh, introduction to the engine. So the engine, the Overt engine is a open source virtualization management uh, platform. Um, it, it provides infrastructure as a service capa capabilities and all the capabilities are exposed using a few, AP, few front, end, front end. So we have a rich uh, admin and user portals, and we have also a REST API for scripts and SDKs for a, a development. And the engine in the Overt responsible to do all the work. So all the requests are a, sent to the Overt engine, and the engine is, uh, is the place that they are uh, processed and executed. So integrating uh, Delta Cloud with Overt, so as I said, every, provi every provider needs a driver. So there is an Overt driver uh, written uh, to Delta Cloud, and uh, what is basically using is the RB Overt, this is a Ruby client for Overt, and this Ruby client communicates over REST API with the Overt engine. So basically, if you're interested for implementing uh, other providers, so I guess this is the common way. You need a driver to talk with it, and probably you want to have some, something in the middle that we know to uh, send the information using uh, uh, some kind of Ruby in, uh, interface. 
Okay, so there are two ways to install and run Delta Cloud Server. Uh, one is using Gem, so you should have the uh, Ruby Gems and uh, all other uh, packages, uh, GCC and LibXML and some other stuff. And then you have to do a Gem install rake uh, in order to install the Delta Cloud Server. Then you have to configure uh, the API provider and then just run it. You should uh, specify what is the front ends that you want to expose, it means what APIs are going to be used. So you, you can see in this example that um, using CME, EC2, and Delta Cloud, so all three of them will be available when using uh, this instance of Delta Cloud, and what provider, so currently it's uh, Revm. The other way of installing Delta Cloud is uh, just using yum install Delta Cloud, Delta Cloud Core All. And basically it installs as a service. So uh, configuration is a little different. Uh, you have to configure everything outside because uh, you don't have run parameters for the service. So you see we configure the API provider and uh, what front end and what driver to use. Um, in Overt, uh, it's important to remember that uh, admin API requests are uh, data center specific, and user API requests are system wide. So if you're using it, it's uh, important to remember that if you're, uh, if you're using admin, then you have to be specific for the data center, and if you're users, then not. Uh, something which is very cool is that uh, the provider and the driver can be set uh, on runtime uh, with the X Delta Cloud provider or driver uh, header. And this is uh, really cool because then you can uh, change stuff on the run. So basic operations uh, that are implemented uh, with the EC2 API on top of Overt Engine. Uh, so uh, here I assume a little that you know um, the entities of Overt, so I have uh, the mapping here. So get Overt cluster is actually availability zone in uh, EC2. Templates is AMI. Uh, VMs are instances. Uh, creating a VM is running is run instance, and start start and stop and delete are pretty much the same. So uh, how it looks like. So as I said, EC2 support, HTTP GET. So getting cluster is just providing the URL for the EC2 provider and action is describe the availability zones. You can see that, uh, uh, you can see that uh, the zone name is the cluster ID and I will look here because it's, and the region name is the cluster name. Okay, so you can see the little differences between how the objects look at EC2 and how it looks at Overt. So we had to do some mapping adjustments. So uh, it doesn't mean too much, just when you get the information from Delta Cloud, so we need to uh, understand what you're seeing. So the like for the zone name is the, the cluster ID, and then when you create some object, then you need a cluster ID, so you know where to take it from. So getting templates, and uh, action is describe images, and here um, the image ID is the template ID, and I think this is the only difference, and that's it. Okay, creating VM from template in a cluster. In EC2, basically what you would have to do is run an instance from an image on some uh, availability zone. So again, it's HTTP GET, URL as, uh, maybe it's a little hard to see. Action is run instances, and here we provide all the parameters. So availability zone is the cluster ID, image ID is the template ID. 
um, other options that are available. So one is sending the user data. In uh, EC2, you, user can fa pass data into the VM. So in Ovilt, it's implemented as a feature that is called VM payload. So we pass the information uh, inside the guest. And uh, another thing is instance type, which is uh, something that is work in progress currently in Ovilt. Uh, which allows a uh, better division between hardware configuration and software configuration as it exists today in EC2, but it doesn't exist in Overt. So this is work in progress, and once we'll have it in Overt, we will have even better mapping uh, for these objects. So uh, the response for creating the VM, uh, you can see you can see the instance ID and image ID is the template ID and uh, the availability zone, which is the cluster of the VM. So really, if you know over it, it's really uh, describe everything that you would expect from a VM to have. And if you know EC2, so it looks uh, really okay to you as a new instance. Uh, getting VMs is describe instances uh, there is an option to get a specific VM information. So describe instances get a parameter, which is the specific uh, VM ID. And you can see the response also. So again, the instance ID is the VM ID, and the image ID is the cluster ID, and the availability zone as well, and its name also. So everything is here, uh, all the information that you would expect and the mapping is uh, really nice. Starting VM is a start instance. Again, parameters requires uh, the specific VM to start. And the response, you can see that uh, the state is pending. So as it is in EC2, it's um, pending to be started. Uh, stopping VM really uh, similar. So now we have a stop instance and again the instance ID and again the response with the instance ID and the state now is stopping. Deleting VM. So in EC2 it's get everything is similar. So uh, it's terminate instance and we have uh, the specific instance ID and it's just remove the VM from the system. So for Simi, and Simi has a REST API, as I said, so uh, it's more similar to the over REST API, if you know it, and the operations that support are uh, uh, get images, which are templates, get VMs, which are machines, uh, create new VM, start in VM, stop in VM, and delete in them. Um, so I will go over these operations and I will show you how it looks like. So getting templates, a uh, REST API, so it's, you have to specific it's HTTP get, and the collection you are talking about is machine images, these are templates, and you can see that you get all the templates in the system. Yeah, again, you can see some uh, some differences. So here we have uh, the the machine image is the template. So you see the uh, template ID in over it is the machi machine image. It's the blank template, and so on. So you get all the objects uh, as you would expect it, but as it looks like in in the semi API. Um, Creating VM, so now we use POST. We use POST on the uh, machines collection and in the body we say, uh, sorry, only POST on the machines and we get back a, a, no, excuse me. We need to specify, yeah, okay. POST in the machines collection and we specify the new machine uh, uh, information. Uh, currently, as I said in Ovilt, we don't have uh, the configuration for software and uh, hardware, so we are using 
uh, Delta Cloud, uh, Server Configuration, um, and in the image we are using the template. So now for getting, uh, this is the response for creating the VM, so we see that uh, new VM created from the template, and we can see it has uh, its new disk. We can see all the information of the VM in the uh, semi API form. Get in VM, so it's HTTP GET uh, on the machine's collection, and we specify uh, the specific machine ID that we want to have, and we get back all the VM information uh, in a semi way. Start in VM, um, it's Again, it's an action, so it's post. So we use HTTP post, a specific uh, VM ID, and we say it's start, and in the body we say the action is start, is the DMTF standard. And the response is just HTTP OK. Same for stopping a VM, really the same. Uh, delete is HTTP delete. So we just need to say which, uh, which VM and HTTP delete, delete it. Future work. Okay, so uh, as I said earlier, not everything that is implemented in Overt is implemented in Delta Cloud and not everything that is implemented in Delta Cloud is implemented in the APIs that it exposes. So we have uh, some stuff missing. Um, and we have a lot of uh, mapping that we currently not, we didn't know how to map because objects are not exactly the same uh, between the different APIs. So uh, for example, CIMI, we don't have support for updating resources. And in EC2, we uh, don't have support uh, for all EC2 operations. Um, some missing in, in Delta Cloud and some missing in the overall provider. And uh, we are missing a mapping for all the network actions. So currently there are, uh, from what I know, almost no network actions um, using Delta Cloud. It can be done on top of Overt, but now there is uh, some work on integration on that. So that could be uh, really cool. And uh, that's about it. So what I talked about, I talked about, uh, showed you what is Delta Cloud and why it's important to have a one API uh, to rule them all, and how to use a one API on top of um, many providers, and one of them is Overt. And if you would like to use it, or if you like to uh, ask question and join uh, the development, so you're more than welcome uh, to ping us at the user's mailing list. And some useful links, so first, uh, all the information about Delta Cloud, so you have the Delta Cloud site and you have the mailing list and uh, the IRC channel. The same for the Overt, so we have the user's mailing list and, uh, and as well uh, IRC. And there is Ovid Ulfali blog, which actually wrote this presentation. So we also wrote a very nice um, post in his blog about using a Delta Cloud with Ovid. So I think uh, it's uh, nice to check out. That's it. Quick. Questions? OK, thank you very much. <laughs>